Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson, which is the third lesson in physical science, um, Grade 12, brought to you by turnable.org. Again, I would like to invite you to join the website, um, the turnable.org website, and to join our Grade 12 physical science class. If you do so, you will have there are lots of pros to doing it. First of all, you have the opportunity to use the mass and masses of free material on the tunable.org website. There are exam papers, test papers, multiple choice questions, videos on how to do all this stuff and learn the stuff. And if you join that class, then you can message me, which means that either during the lesson or after the lesson, I'll be able to see your messages and then I will respond accordingly. Um, you can ask questions about certain sections or you can say well I didn't really understand that can you do more examples on that section that type of thing um, or yeah okay we can see how that goes um, but the whole idea is that this eventually is supposed to be a nice interactive lesson where I can get a feel for what you guys need to go through and then I can work through that at the moment, I'm going through the Eastern Cape June Common Paper, which is available on the Turnable platform. It's in week 20 or 21. It's the June revision week. Um, you can download the paper. And as I said before, I isn't a memo yet for this paper on the platform. And the reason for that is because, as I've said multiple times before, um, we're all human and we all tend to sit with a memo right next to us while we're doing the questions. And then we can't help but glance at the memo when we're struggling. And that's effectively cheating because there is no memo in the exams. And what happens is when you see the memo, even if you glance at it very briefly, you get a little iota of, oh yes, I know how to do this question. And then you go ahead full fledged and you think, I know physics, I know science, I don't need to worry. But the problem is that in the exam, there is no memo to glance at and there is no little spark to help you with that oh yes you need to get that for yourselves which means you have to work through these questions by yourself before you look at the memo okay enough chatting let's move on we were busy looking at question five which is about the doppler effect and the question that we had been looking at was when we asked is the ship moving away from us or towards us and give a reason for the answer and we said that since the frequency the detected frequency was actually lower than the actual frequency that then obviously the ship was moving away and then I just drew this little picture to explain it to you right now they say calculate the speed of the ship okay so the formula is on the formula sheet and as I've mentioned before please guys you should have this formula sheet out and next to you all the time whether you're doing physics or chemistry the formula sheet needs to be next to you okay so the freak the formula says the frequency of the observer or listener is equal to V plus or minus V of the listener okay or the observer all over V plus or minus V of the source times by the frequency of the source. That is the formula that you get given, which looks pretty scary, but it's not really, because this is obviously the frequency that the observer hears, and you might have either an O for observer or L for listener. This is obviously the frequency that it's actually given off, that's the frequency of the source. These Vs here are the speed of sound, okay? And in this case, it happens to be 1,470, so that's pretty easy. This is the velocity of the observer or listener, and this is the velocity of the source, which in this case is the ship. So the observer isn't moving. Do you agree? The submarine is used and it's at rest. The submarine is at rest. So therefore, this goes away. Yay. Okay, so now we're just left with this. So if we think about it, we've got the frequency of the observer is equal to 1470 over 
1470 and we need to work out whether this is a plus or minus okay vs times the frequency of the source okay now they say that it says here detects the frequency of the moving ship which is 0, 0,8 five times the actual frequency of the sound okay so what we're saying is that if we've got f of s is the frequency of source the frequency of the observer is equal to 0, 0,985 times the frequency of the source and the reason that's important is because if you read through this carefully you will see that we've been given 437 and we can actually work out what the frequency is but we could also just substitute this into the equation and then cancel and then we've got less fewer numbers where we could make some experimental errors okay or mathematical errors so i'm going to do this i'm going to write naught comma and 985, okay, f of s is equal to 1470 all over 1470 vs times by f of s, okay, and then I'm cancelling this. And the reason I've done this before I decide whether or not I'm going to put a plus or minus in is because we need to think about this. If this number is smaller than one, then obviously this fraction has to have a big denominator, which means this is a plus, okay? If this number was bigger than one, then the denominator would be smaller, okay? And therefore this would be a minus. Or you could just learn it, okay? But it gets tricky when you've got things coming towards you and you're going away from it and all sorts of things and you've got pluses and minus at the top and the bottom. So rather think of it as a fraction. If we need the whole of this to be a proper fraction, in other words, this is 0,985, which can be written as 985 over 1,000, right? So that's like a fraction where the numerator is smaller than the denominator. That means that this has to be bigger than that. The denominator has to be bigger than that if this was 3.2 then obviously the numerator would have to be bigger and that would be a minus okay so now all we need to do is solve for this okay which then becomes we're going to take it across and take it across so we end up with a okay, it slowly so we're going to end up with naught comma nine eight five times by 1470 plus vs is equal to 1470. All I've done is taken this and multiplied it across the equal sign. Then what we're going to do is divide both sides by the 0 0.985. Well, I could have cross multiplied, but like I said, I'm doing this slowly. So I'm dividing that by 0 0,985. Okay, and those cancel. And then I'm going to subtract 1470 from this side, but if I do it from that side, I need to do it on this side. So I'm subtracting 147 over that. And then I'm just popping this into my calculator. So let's get out my calculator. And it's clear. And it says fraction 1470 all over 0, 0,985 moving over, minus 147, 1470, and that equals uh, something ridiculous, so we change it, and it becomes 22,385, which is obviously 22,39, comma because we're rounding off. So that's 22, comma three nine and what we're working at we're working at speed in meters per second so that's meters per second and there we go we've done this question okay so doppler effect is always in the exam papers so please make sure you need to know how to do it right now this is question five continued so this is still the doppler effect okay still the doppler effect I just separated onto the sec second page. It says light emitted from distant stars demonstrates the phenomenon known as redshift. Explain how the phenomenon 
known as redshift can be used to explain the expanding universe. Okay. Well, what redshift means? Redshift means that the light that is being emitted from the stars, we are seeing it, remember it's an apparent shift, as if it's been shifted towards the red side of the spectrum, the red side. And the red side is the lower frequency, okay? The red side is the lower frequency. And as I explained using this, the lower frequency means that it means that it's going away from us. So that means it's going away okay and why do they say expanding universe because it doesn't matter in which direction we look at we will always see this red shift so remember if we are here we will doesn't matter which direction we look we are seeing these stars all move away from us okay so therefore they said there's an expanding universe right now it says Absorption spectra, still Doppler effect, right? Absorption spectra from the sun and another galaxy is shown below. Okay, this is the spectrum from the sun and this is the spectrum from the other galaxy. And this is exactly how it appeared in the exam paper. So you're not missing any color in this question. Okay, it says study the atomic absorption spectrum, spectra and answer the question, does the spectrum of the other galaxy constitute a red shift or a blue shift. Okay, so if you look at this, you can see that the original one is there's two lines here and then a single line and then a single line. Okay, over here, th these two lines are now closer to the blue. This line is closer to the blue side and this line is closer to the blue side. So obviously this is just very easy that it's obviously the other galaxy has the spectrum has shifted to the blue side. Okay, nice and easy, right? Let's move on. Okay, listen guys, this has become a firm favorite in the exam papers at the moment. The reason being is that when I was at school, back in the dark ages, this was part of the exam paper, okay? These tension questions were part of the exam paper questions. And then they took them out of the curriculum, okay? And they've just put them back in, okay? I think they've been in for, I think, one year, maybe two years. So for that reason, okay, just as much as there's fashion trends in everything else, you know, sometimes you, if you look at, if you look at, your cell phones, sometimes everybody will go, oh, no, you have to have Samsung, and then they'll go, oh, no, you have to have an iPhone and everything else. Or if you're talking about jeans, everybody wants a Levi's or they want something else, etc., etc. At the moment, the fashionable question, yes, there is such a thing, in physics is this type of question. Okay, so at the moment, very popular with all your teachers and your examiners is this type of question. So you need to make sure you know how to do it. Okay, so let's go through it. A four kilogram block, this dude here, okay, is on a rough horizontal surface and is connected to eight kilogram block by a light inelastic string that passes over a frictionless pulley, as shown. It says below, sorry, next to it. The coefficient of the kinetic friction between the block of four kilograms and the surface is 0.6 newtons. So mu k. The coefficient of the kinetic friction is 0, 0,6, okay? And we kind of knew there was going to be kinetic friction because they told us it was rough and horizontal. And the reason they're telling this that the string is light and inelastic is that they're basically saying it has no impact and the friction is pulley. It has no impact on the forces that are being applied here. Okay, so the first question is, Draw a free body diagram to show the forces acting horizontally on the four kilogram block. So there are a couple of keywords here. The first one is free body diagram. So I don't want a force, body, force diagram, I want a free body diagram. What's the difference? A free body diagram is a dot, a big dot. Okay, colored in circles, some of my students say. It's a big dot, 
Okay, that's the first step. Secondly, it says showing the forces acting horizontally. So if you start by drawing a normal force on here and the force of gravity, you are going to lose marks because they only want the horizontal forces. Okay, and what are the horizontal forces? Well, obviously this block is pulling the four kilogram this way. Okay, admittedly it's going down, but what is the four kilogram experiencing? It's experiencing a force to the right. So there is your applied force, if applied. We also know, obviously, that there is a force of friction because they tell us that there's a coefficient of kinetic friction. And the force of friction is always in the opposite direction to the movement. So therefore, it's going to be this way, force of friction. Okay, and here's the other hint or tip. 99.99% of time, the number of marks allocated to the free body diagram is the number of forces that you have to draw, okay? Maybe once in a blue moon, there might be an extra force or one force less because they've been given marks allocated to labels. But I can tell you that 90% of the time, that is the number of forces you have to draw. So there's a little hint. The force applied, you can also write T for tension because it's a, a string and that is the tension in the string. So either would have been correct. I also note that the force of friction here is a shorter line than the tension or force applied. And guys, if you cannot draw a freehand straight line, then use a ruler. It's very important. You need to be using rulers for this. It needs to be nice and neat. Okay, next question. It says calculate the acceleration of the system. Uh, calculate the acceleration of the system for seven marks. Okay, so seven marks. Okay, that's quite a lot of marks, and they're being mean because usually what they do is they break it down for you, but they haven't in this case. Okay, so what haven't they asked you to do? They haven't asked you to draw a free body diagram for the eight kilogram. So I'm going to do that now. And why am I going to do it? Because it impacts on the four free body diagram on the four, for the four kilograms because it helps us with this T. Okay, so let's look at that. The eight kilogram, there are only two forces acting on the eight kilogram as well. There is the force of gravity down, right? and the T up, okay? And do you agree that that tension has to be the same as that tension? I'm gonna call it tension from now on. For the simple reason that that is joined, okay? So you need to understand that concept. So effectively, this force of gravity here is what's pulling this four kilogram along. Okay, so we also know that F net equals mass times acceleration. F net equals mass times acceleration. So let's have a look at our four kilogram. Do you agree our four kilogram block? F net is equal to T plus the negative force of friction. Remember, you always have to show that the net force is the sum of all the forces, the sum. Okay, and remember, okay, I should have said in the first place, I'm choosing that as positive because obviously that is the direction which it's moving. Okay, so therefore F net is equal to T minus the force of friction. And I know that F force of friction can be written as force of friction can be written as mu k fn, right? But fn is equal to mg, right? So do you agree? I can rearrange this and I can write ma, right? My f net, my plus the force of friction, which is mu k, then mass, times gravity is equal to the tension in the string. Okay, you're happy with that? Okay. And in fact, yeah, okay, so let's just leave that alone for the minute. That's equation one. 
Okay, I can put numbers in, but I'm not going to right now. Right, remember that this is for the four kilogram. Now let's look at the eight kilogram. The eight kilogram, F net, is equal to, and again, if we're choosing the direction we want to be positive as I'm going in the direction it's moving, it is going to be the force of gravity plus minus the tension, okay? Because it's moving down. Therefore, the mass of the eight kilograms times by acceleration is equal to the mass of the eight kilograms times gravity minus tension. Okay, agreed. So therefore, do you agree that I can say that T, well minus T, is equal to M8A minus M8G, therefore T is equal to, I'm just going to put 8 because it's mass, 8A, 8G minus 8a. Okay, and that is equation 2. So do you agree we now have two equations with t? So I can simultaneously equate and I can get that a, which is what they're asking, the acceleration of the system. Okay, and that a there. So do you agree that I could say this mass is 4, right? Because it's for the 4 kilogram. 4a plus mu k, which is 0,6 times the mass, which is 4, times gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9, 8, equals 8 times by 9.8 minus 8a, right? That t has to equal that t. Right, so then I can just solve for this, okay? So I'm going to take everything that has a number and put it on the left hand side and everything that has an A and put it on the right hand side. So I've got 0, 0,6 times by 4 times 9.8 minus 8 times 9.8 is equal to minus 8A minus 4A. And remember when you take something across the equal sign and change the signs, that becomes minus 4A. So this is minus 12a is equal to this thing here. So I need my calculator. And I'm going to move it over. Okay, and we're going to clear. And we're going to go 0 0.6 times 4 times 9.8 equals minus, open bracket, 8 times 9.8 close bracket equals that's ridiculous so it's minus 54 comma 88 minus 54 comma 88 so let's write that out it begins minus 54 comma 88 and then obviously to solve for a we need to divide both sides by 12 so then we can cancel that and we get out our calculator again and we go divided by 12 and it becomes, okay, I forgot to divide by minus, so it's just, okay. So therefore it is going to, okay, let me just do that again. I wonder if I can. There we go, minus 12, minus 12. And then go across and then go equals. There we go. So therefore, this becomes 0, 0,3811111, which equals 0, 0,38. So therefore, your A equals 0, 0,38, and what are the SI units for acceleration? Meters per second squared. And grade tools were not finished. Did I get that wrong? 54.88 divided by 12. Let me just check that. Let me check it. Okay, let me check it. Uh, 54.88 divided by 12. Oh, sorry. My apologies. 4.57. That's better. 4.57. Much better answer. 4.57. And we're not finished because they asked to calculate the acceleration system. So you need to give a direction. So you could say to the right. To the right. Okay, 
All right, now there, is, there are other options. In fact, there are always options, different options to do these questions. I'm going to, I've just done this one option, which is the one that I found the easiest. If you go through the memo, you will see other options on how to do this question. And if you would like to know how to do them, then message me and I will happily go through those options with you. All right, now it says calculate the magnitude of the tension in the string. Okay, well that's pretty easy because we can use either this equation or we can use this equation. Okay, and I'm just going to change color so you can see what I'm doing. I don't want to erase all of this, so I'm going to just use this formula, but I'm going to use it up here, but I'm going to erase this bit here. Actually, you know what, I'm just going to erase it. No, I'm not. Because you need to see it. Okay, so we're using this and we've got 8 times 9.8 minus 8 times 4,57 equals T. So that is what we're doing. You could have substituted into this one as well. It's no big deal, either or. And we need a calculator and we need to bring it across and clear everything. So we go 8 times 9.8 minus bracket 8 times 4.57 close bracket equals and that's 41.84 41.84 t is 41,84 and what do you always have to do you have to put your units in and that is in newtons because it's the tension and they've asked you for the magnitude which conveniently is circled, so you do not need to give a direction, which is awesome. Now it says calculate the magnitude of the frictional force that acts on the four kilogram block. Seriously? Okay, so we know that the force of friction is mu k, f, f is equal to mu k fn, okay? So ff is equal to mu k, which we know is 0,6, times by the mass of the block, which is 4, times by the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9,8. And if you pop that into your calculator, you are going to get 23.52 Newtons. And I actually have a feeling that that question was put in so that even if you couldn't do the really big question, you could get some marks for this question overall. Okay, because that doesn't really fit in any way you use it already. Okay, question seven. Yay, question seven. It says, collisions between vehicles take place on the roads in our country daily. In one of these collisions, there is a car of mass 1,650 kgs, a little red car, and it's traveling 25 meters per second to the left. Collides head on with the minibus mass 3050 kilograms traveling 15.1 15, 15 meters per second to the right the two vehicles move together as a unit in a straight line after the collision and you'll notice they do not say in which direction they move okay it says calculate the velocity of the two vehicles after the collision okay so what are we using we're using momentum this is a momentum question or the first part is momentum question so what do we know we know that with momentum that p before has to equal p after okay so we need to apply that but before we do that we need to remember that momentum is a vector so what do we need to do? We need to decide on a direction to be positive. And I am going to choose the right, going to the right as positive. Okay, I'm choosing right as positive, which means that this 25 meters per second is going to become minus 25 meters per second because of the fact that it is moving towards the left. Right, so let's do this. We've got P before equals p after okay 
Now, what's important is that you have to write the next line. There is a mark allocated for the next line. Okay, we're going to call this dude the mini bus. We're going to call it a bus for bus, and we're going to call this car. And they are separate entities. So we've got the niche, the mass of the bus multiplied by the initial velocity of the bus. And this is the formula for momentum, right? P is equal to mv, mass times velocity, plus the mass of the car, the initial velocity of the car, equals, and now what happens, they said they travel together as a unit. They got stuck together, which means we can add their masses together, right? So we've got the mass of the bus plus the mass of the car. They're stuck together times by the final velocity of the bus in the car, right? And that's the thing that we're trying to find out. It says calculate the velocity of the two vehicles after the collision. We're trying to find VF. There is a mark allocated to this, if not more than that. I mean, there might be more than one mark allocated depending on the memo. In this memo, there is one mark allocated to it. But the reason it's important as well is because if you don't write this and then you just write some numbers down after this and you don't show where those numbers came from, you can't get the next marks, okay? So this is why this line is super important with all these little subscripts. They're very, very important. So the mass of the minibus is 3050. Its initial velocity is 15 plus the mass of the car, which is 1,650, times its initial velocity, which is minus 25, is equal to the combined masses of the cars, which is 3,050 plus 1,650 times by the final velocity. Okay, and now we need our calculators. So the first thing we're going to do is left hand side. We're going to go 3050 times by 15 equals plus bracket 1650 times minus 25 close bracket equals and it becomes 4,500, okay, so that's 4,500, is equal to this number here, which we need to add up. Um, and we'll get our calculator out, so I can show you how to do it. It becomes 3050 plus 1650, and that becomes 4,700, 4,700. Vf. So to solve for the final velocity, we need to divide both sides by 4,700. Let's cancel, obviously, and we get out our calculator. And we go 4,500 divided by 4,700 equals, and change it to decimal. And remember, we are always rounding off in science to two decimal places. So this becomes 0,96. So VF is equal to 0, 0,96 meters per second, and it is a vector. So we need to give a direction, right? But we chose going to the right is positive, and this is a positive answer. Therefore, we can say to the right, to the right. Okay, so that is your five marks done awesome okay and that is momentum now they say prove a means of calculations that the collision was inelastic so what is important about elastic and inelastic collisions or well, what's important is that in elastic collisions in elastic collisions your kinetic energy your ek is conserved which means the kinetic energy before the system has to equal the set, I mean, before the collision has to be the same as the kinetic energy after the collision. Okay, so then we have to work it out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to erase a link. Okay, you guys will have had the writing on it 
anyway, so that's fine. I mean, if you'd been doing this question, this writing would be above the, on the piece of paper. So what we need to remember what, what the final velocity was, and the final velocity was 0.96 meters per second and just positive. Okay, so what's important about the EK is that with momentum, you guys always go P before is equal to P after, and that is correct because momentum is always conserved. If an if a collision is elastic, then the kinetic energy before the collision has to equal the kinetic energy after the collision. If it's inelastic, it doesn't. So you cannot just use this. If you go write EK before equals EK after and then solve for this and then realize it doesn't equal and just write that, that is a very bad method. It's not good science practice, it's not good maths practice, and you'll be penalized for it. What you need to do is you actually need to work out the kinetic energy before, then you need to work out the kinetic energy afterwards and compare them and decide if they're equal, then it's elastic, and if they're not equal, then it's inelastic. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna work out the EK before which is equal to, and again, we're going to choose one direction as positive, but it actually doesn't matter because the velocities are squared. So it's going to be half the mass of the bus, the initial velocity of the bus, all squared, plus half the mass of the car, the initial velocity of the car, all squared, which is going to be half times the mass of the bus, which is 3050, times the initial velocity, which is 15 squared, plus a half times the mass of the car, which is 1,650, times the initial velocity of the car, which is minus 25, all squared. And I'm really hoping that you guys know that the reason I'm using this equation is because EK or K is equal to half MV squared. It's on your formula sheet, but you guys should know it. Right, so let's pop this into our calculators. So we've got, we might have to move halfway through. Okay, so we've got 0 0.5 times 3050 times 15 squared plus, move this across, bracket, 0, 0,5 times 160. 50 times 25. I'm really hoping you guys, okay, let me do it separately just in case. Delete, delete, bracket, minus 25, close bracket, squared, close bracket, equals, sure, 85, no, 858,750, 858,750. Okay, so let's write that down, equals 858,750, and what is it? It's the kinetic energy, which means it's measured in joules, joules. Now let's do the EK after. The EK after is again a half mv squared, but this time the cars are stuck together. So it's the mass of the bus and car, and then the final velocity squared, right? which is a half times 4,700, if I remember correctly. I think I do. Yes. Okay. Times by the final velocity, which is 0, 0,96 all squared. And I need my calculator. Hmm, let's put it over here. So that becomes... Mm, lift it up. 0, 0,5 times 4,700 times 0, 0,96 squared, all equals, funny number, 2,165 and 76 joules, which equals 2,165 and 76 joules. And that's huge difference. That is a really, really big difference in the kinetic energy. 
So you can see that it's obvious. And then guys, we haven't finished the sum, hey? Because it says proof of means, yeah, no, proof of means of calculations that the collision was inelastic. So we need to say, therefore it's inelastic. And why is it inelastic? Because EK before does not equal EK after, okay? And by the way, guys, just in case you think about doing this, I have students that do it. Just because you know that if it's inelastic, it means that the kinetic energy does not equal the final energy doesn't mean that you can skip the whole working and just write this and expect to mark. OK, that's not how this works. You have to prove it and then write that down. OK, so you don't get a mark for this if you haven't done the working. You only get a mark for this if you've done the working and you've shown it. OK. So it is definitely inelastic and there's a huge energy difference. And a typical question would be to ask where that energy has gone. OK, so let's look at the next question. It says new cars have crumple zones to help minimize injuries during accidents. Airbags and padded interiors can also help to reduce the changes of chances of fatal injury or serious injury. Use a principle in physics to explain how crumple zones can reduce the chances of fatal or serious injury. And again, grade 12, this is a question that comes up so often, okay? And what it is, is realizing that what you are looking at is the fact that the crumple zones and the airbags and the padded interiors increase the time it takes to stop. It increases the time it takes to stop. Okay. And what you can think about is the fact that you know that impulse, F delta T, is equal to the change in momentum, delta P, okay, which is MVF minus MVI, right? So if I then rearrange this equation, I can say F is equal to delta P over delta T, or I could write it as M. VF minus MVI over delta T. Now, do you agree that if you're in a collision, while you're in a collision, you cannot change your mass? Okay, not really. You've got, a, you've got an initial velocity and a final velocity. So when you are trying to reduce the injury, when you're in that actual collision, the only thing you can do is play with the time. Okay, and if we increase the time, what do we do to the whole fraction? We decrease it, which means that we decrease the force. Okay, so when they say use a principle in physics to explain how crumple zones can reduce the chance time, this is what they want. They want you to explain the fact that crumple zones increase the time it takes to stop. And by doing so, and then you write down this equation, you write down F delta T equals MVF minus VI. Therefore, F is equal to MVF minus VI over delta T. By increasing the, and you say, by increasing the time, we're decreasing the overall fraction and therefore decreasing the force experienced. And so you are hopefully not going to be injured. Okay. And I'm going to stop there because this is the end of question seven and we're basically out of time. Please join me tomorrow and we will continue with question eight and the rest of the paper. Ooh, only three more questions. Yay. And then we can move on to the chemistry paper. Right, grade 12s, I hope you found that useful. Please, I would urge you, if you missed anything in this lesson, to go and click on where you click to get to this lesson this time, and you will see a recording of it. Okay, so please do that. Right, have a great day.